Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit gets fed, my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. We welcome you to come right on into the class today. We've saved you a seat up here in the front. Get your Bible, something to make a note with. And we're going to pray and release faith that the Lord gives us utterance. Um, these things uh, that we're doing in all le legitimate ministry of God is not natural. It's not just mental. There is a spiritual, actually supernatural element of it. And that is that uh, the Spirit of God in us gives us utterance uh, to speak and minister. And everybody that's hearing the Spirit of God in you gives you hearing to see and hear things beyond the limitations of your intellect that you just see and know in His presence, in His unction or anointing. Uh, so let's release faith for that. Uh, turn off all the distractions and if anything that you're needing to do, uh, you're not doing it now, so just postpone it, <laughs> shut the door on it for a few minutes and give this your full attention. Father, in Jesus' name, we all come together, uh, agreeing together is touching this. We ask you for the anointing. We ask you for the utterance. We ask you for eyes and ears and hearts and minds that can see, hear, and receive. We ask you for answers for issues, for solutions to problems. We ask you for the next steps and next parts of your plan revealed. We ask you for additional grace and help in our lives, your ability. And we, we purpose to not just be forgetful hearers, but to hold on to it, put it into practice. Thank you for doing great and good and wonderful things in our lives. Get glory to yourself in our lives. Let others see your working and your doings in our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you look please in the great textbook, the Bible, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. For some weeks now, we have been on the subject of, um, we're calling it by faith. And it is uh, an in-depth study of Hebrews 11, that great um, hero's hall of fame of faith. And it actually begins here, the passage uh, that he's talking about, the subject he's talking about, begins in chapter 10 and actually extends into chapter 12. This was not written originally in chapter and verse. So verse 35 of chapter 10, it says, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Confidence is um, another word for faith. In fact, in Hebrews 11.1, 1, where it gives the definition of faith, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The Young's literal translation of that says, Faith is of things hoped for a confidence, of matters not seen a conviction. So you can use the word confidence interchangeably with the word faith. Also the word conviction you can use interchangeably with faith and the word trust. Faith is confidence. Faith is conviction. You remember the Bible said Abraham was fully persuaded. And then faith is trust. Don't cast away your confidence. You could sit like this. Don't cast away your faith. It has great recompense of reward for you have need of patience that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. What you see in these phrases about drawing back describes fear. And fear is the opposite of faith. Uh, the scripture said the just shall live by faith. The just shall walk by faith. Faith is the victory that over comes. Well, fear causes, if you yield to it, causes you to draw back. It causes you to pull back, to quit, to back off. And that's what the enemy is trying to do to all of us is to bluff us, 
to intimidate us, to get us to just be quiet and sit down, go back in the house, <laughs> shut the door, don't do anything, don't attempt anything. Uh, but that's not how God is pleased. God is a faith God. Say it out loud, everybody. God, God is, is a, a faith, faith God. God. Now, we see in the sixth verse, it says it's not challenging, but impossible to please Him without faith. What does it mean? Well, one of the things about this is He knows what you're capable of. <laughs> now, other people don't know. And you might be able to fool some other people. You might be able to whine and say, I can't, I can't. But the Lord looks through all the junk and he knows, yes, you can. I see what you can do. And he wants you and I to stand up and overcome fear and dare to trust him and step out and step up. Not pulling back, not drawing back, not cowering, not laying down. That doesn't please him, he said. But stepping up, stepping out, laying hold, hallelujah, fighting the good fight of faith, laying hold on eternal life. Well, that's, that sounds like finding some courage, right? <laughs> finding some bravery and some courage. And so, um, you know, I... I don't like it when I see some of the old westerns, you know, and, and when uh, there's uh, attacks, you know, uh, then uh, the, the preacher is cowering under the wagon <laughs> while the real men are, are fighting, you know. No, that's not the Bible. Uh, David didn't cower under the wagon, did he? <laughs> when everybody else was, was cowering, he faced somebody that was giant, you know, uh, faith is not a coward. Mm -mm. It's the exact opposite. Faith is courageous. Faith is confident. Can you see this? Faith is confident. When we find our faith, we find our confidence. And even in the natural things of life, it's the people who are confident, who know who they are, who know what they're wanting to do, who, who know where they're going, that makes an impression on everybody around you. I mean, if you're going in for an interview and, and you fumble around and mumble and they can't understand you and, and, and uh, your answer to three quarters of the questions is, I don't know, that's not, you're probably not going to get the job, right? <laughs> but when you exude confidence... You, you exude confidence because you know something. Hallelujah. And this, come, this is the uh, explanation of biblical boldness. You'll see numerous times where it talked about such and such was bold. And this one was very bold. And we're told even come before the throne of God boldly. That doesn't mean arrogantly. That's another thing. Why would you be bold? How could you be bold? You're bold because you're sure. <laughs> you're bold because you know something. You're not wondering about it. You don't think maybe it is, maybe it's not. That makes you unsure. That prevents you from being confident and bold. But when you know, and you'll find numerous places in the scriptures where it says, we know. <laughs> We know. Don't you like that? Oh, man, not, not we're thinking it could be that way. Maybe it's that way. We know. We know uh, what God has given us. We know the truth of the gospel. And when you know it, it displaces all the fear and insecurity, and you get bold. Not pushy, not arrogant, but just confident. Hallelujah. Cast not away your confidence it has great recompense of reward. We're not of those that draw back, verse 39. Say that out loud. We're not of those who draw back, of those who cower, of those who fear. We are those that believe. Hallelujah. We advance in faith and we overcome in faith. He has made us to be victorious ones. He's made us to be more than conquerors. 
Now say it out loud. Somebody needs to say this. I'm not a loser. I'm, not a, loser. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. He, always he always causes me to triumph, me to triumph. In, the in the anointed one and his anointing. And his anointing. I'm not a loser. I'm not a loser. Uh, now something that's it's just like the enemy. It's a deception and backwards. But he will try to tell you that you're a loser. And he is the biggest loser. <laughs> Have you read the back of the book? The devil loses on a scale nobody has ever lost before. He is not just a loser. He is the loser. Is that right? Yes. So next time he tries to tell you, you're a loser, you start laughing. You say, you calling me a loser? <laughs> no, you are a winner. Christ has made you a winner. Before you even start, you're a winner. <laughs> All you got to do is just not give up. Just keep with it. And he will, even though you have some setbacks or some challenges, you just remind yourself, well, we're, we're not done. We're not through. <laughs> we keep going till we experience the victory the Lord's already paid for. So he says uh, in, in that uh, Young's Literal Translation, chapter 11, verse 1, Faith is of things hoped for, a confidence, of matters not seen, a conviction. And then verse after verse after verse through, through chapter 11, he gives living examples of people who did not cower and fear and run away and give up and quit, but people who had this bold confidence, just like, you know, that's one of the uh, graphics we have representing uh, faith school, is uh, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with it, the little guy is David. <laughs> the big guy is Goliath. And didn't it take some confidence for David, the Bible said uh, he he declared, and this is how faith talks, before he ever started fighting, he said, I, I'm going to uh, give your head to, <laughs> I'm going to take off your head today. You and all your buddies too. And, and he just declared some astonishing things that would just, it would have sounded impossible, but it came to pass. And then he ran towards this mountain of a man with nothing but a slingshot and the name of the Lord. <laughs> He said, the, he said, you come with a big shield and a big spear. I come to you. He, he wasn't counting on anything except in the name of the Lord of hosts. He'll give you into my hand. But he had to have some kind of confidence, didn't he? Mm -hmm. To run towards what, what anybody would have called death. <laughs> <laughs> You're running to die. And that's what the, the Goliath told him. Come on, you know, am I a dog? You've come out here with, uh, against me, a boy with a stick? He was insulted. He said, well, come on. I'll give your carcass to the birds. But it did not work out that way. <laughs> Faith sees miracles. Confidence in God sees things come to pass that others thought was impossible, could not happen. And we have a whole chapter, the next 30 uh, some verses of example after example after example of someone who dared to step out and boldly speak and boldly act because of knowing who God is, knowing what he said, knowing what he would do. Saying this, we, we need to understand there is a religious concept and practice that is completely contrary to what we've been talking about for the last several minutes. And that is to add to every prayer and every situation, if it be thy will. You know, if it, if it be thy will, God. So said, what's wrong with that? If you don't know the will of God, if you're consecrating yourself and saying, Lord, I'm willing to do uh, this, if it be your will, okay, that's good. But if you're saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins, if it be thy will. Well, that's not okay. Because the Bible reveals to you that it is his will. And as long as you're questioning the will of God, are you confident in, in receiving the result that you're praying about? 
So when it comes to things where God has already revealed his will, to add the phrase, if it be thy will, is faith destroying. You cannot have faith for a specific thing as long as you're still questioning God's will about that thing. Ephesians says, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. It's not okay to just go through life and say, well, nobody really knows what the will of God is. I guess if it's his will, it'll happen. Uh, If it didn't happen, it must not have been his will. No, that's wrong thinking. God gave us this book, and he gave us the author of the book. Not because he wanted us in the dark, because he wants us to know what his will is. And that's what the scripture says. In fact, we looked at it last week, but it'll bear repetition. Go to 1 John uh, 5 and see, see the language here. 1 John 5 and 14. He said, this is the what? This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, what? According to his will, he hears us. So before you're ready to pray a prayer of faith, you have to find the will of God. Is everybody listening? It's not okay to say, Lord, you know, heal me if it be thy will. For all the good that prayer is going to do you, you might as well not have prayed at all. Are y'all listening, class? Now, I know some folks don't like this, but there's reasons why millions of people are getting no results even though they're begging and crying and begging and crying. Without faith, it is what? Impossible. Impossible. You can't pray a prayer that pleases God that he can work with, with full of unbelief and doubt. No, the Bible said he took your infirmities. He bore your sicknesses. He carried your pains. By his stripes, you're healed, right? Is it reasonable to look at Jesus hanging on the cross bearing our sins, and say, Jesus, is it your will for me to be forgiven of sin? Is that reasonable? Why is he there? (laughs) Right? Why should I continue? Is it your will for me to be saved? Well, why is he on the cross? Why is he taking your place? It's just as unreasonable to look at Jesus strapped to the whipping post. Can you see this? Being, Being beaten and the Bible said he, he was, he, by his stripes we're healed. And say, Jesus, do you want me healed? Is it your will for me? Maybe it's not his will that I be healed. That's uh, ignorant of Scripture. Come on, can you see this? That's why he went. He didn't have to go to the whipping post to go to the cross. Can you see this, class? He could have went to the cross. That would have been enough, you know, to take care of a lot of things. Why did he also go to the whipping post? Uh, He was not a helpless victim in this situation. When they came to get him, and you remember, he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus. He said, I am. They all fell to the ground. Demonstrating. uh, he, He said, I have the commandment of my father. I lay my life down and I take it back up. No man takes it from me. He was not a helpless victim at the hands of these soldiers beating him and crucifying him, everything was allowed to happen. He let it happen. The Father let it happen. He received it. Why? He went to the cross. He went to the whipping post. He went to the garden. He offered up himself spirit and soul and body. Do you believe it? Did he obtain a complete redemption for us? Have we been redeemed? Spirit and soul and body. Huh? Uh, Did judgment fall on him because of our sin? And did the chastisement of our peace come on him? And did every source and cause of every sickness and disease come on him? It did. He was even made poor for our sakes. Is that right? So that we might be made rich. Oh, child of God, he left nothing out. When he said it is finished, there is nothing that remains to be done. We have a complete redemption. Oh, somebody say, I've been bought with a price. price. My spirit spirit. and my soul and my my body 
are redeemed. Are redeemed. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. What am I saying? That Well, when you realize that and you come to be fully persuaded of that and you know that, you stop saying, if it be thy will to forgive me. You stop saying, is it your will to heal me? You stop saying, is it your will for my bills to be paid? You stop saying, is it your will for me to be free from confusion and anxiety and have peace? You stop saying that. To say, if it be thy will for these things, is to show ignorance of the word, ignorance of redemption, ignorance of who God is. He is a good father. What good father wants his children suffering from anxiety and oppression and mental anguish or suffering from poverty or suffering from pain of sickness and disease? No good parent wants their children suffering from that. If the Father God wants us suffering from that, he's out of step in keeping with all other parent, good parenthood we know anything about. He is not an abuser of his children. Do you believe it? He's a good father. Why am I saying this? Again, it comes back to praying a prayer of faith with confidence. Read this again, 1 John 5, 14. This is the what? This is the confidence. Don't you like that word? This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, what do we know? What do we know? Not we think so. Not we hope so. Not we feel so. We know so. We know that he hears us. But what do we have to get a hold of before we'd know that? We have to get a hold of his will. What's his will? How, how can I be sure God heard that prayer? Now that, that lets you know we're not going by feelings. Right? Well, we must not be going by feelings. Because we have to know that it's the will of God. And that's why we have uh, faith school. <laughs> and that's why you have a Bible, right? And that's why you go to church. And that's why you go to meetings. And that's why you, you feed on this word. Why The Bible said the Spirit of God's been given to us in 1 Corinthians 2. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We need to be filled, you know, we see these prayers in Ephesians and Colossians, to be filled with the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What does that mean? You quit fumbling and bumbling around and just tagging every prayer and statement with, if it be thy will, that's being lazy. Can you see that? Yes, it's being lazy spiritually. If you don't know the will of God, put your nose in this book. Is that right? right? Seek him until you find out. Is this his will? And when you do find out it's his will, man, you get like a bulldog with a good bone. <laughs> you, is that right? You lay hold of it. You bite down into it. And nobody can convince you that it might not be God's will for you. Nobody can talk you out of it. You cannot pray a prayer of faith to receive something from God as long as you're questioning His will about it. As long as you're questioning God's will, is it His will for me to have it or not? You cannot pray the prayer of faith. So sometimes people pray, they try to pray for something too quickly, actually. They're not ready to pray because they're still questioning His will. This is the confidence that we have in Him. What? That if we ask anything, According to his will. You know, in John 15, the Lord said, uh, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Now, that's a big statement. You'll ask whatever you will, and it'll happen for you? Well, why? Well, don't miss that first part. If, if you abide, abide means not, not visit, but live. You live in me and my words live in you. If you live in his words, his words live in you. You're thinking about them night and day. Are you going to find out his will? 
Are you going to know what he likes, what he doesn't like, what he's given you, what he doesn't want you to have? And that's why you'll be full of knowledge of his will. And that's why when you ask for something, you'll do it so boldly. And whatever you ask, it'll happen for you. You're in line with him. And prayers you're praying, he can do something with. Faith statements you're making, he can do something with. Because you're not going crosswise of him, you're with him. This is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Verse 15, what, what does it say? And if we what? No. If we what? No. no. Somebody say no. 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 Know that he hear us. You, you hear people say, well, you, you think he heard us on that? If, we, if we've taken the time to find his will, then we don't have to feel a thing to know he heard us. Was that the will of God? Yeah, we've got four scriptures right here that says it's the will of God. Then reckon he heard us? Absolutely. Right? You don't have to talk God into something that was his idea. Right? We know, hallelujah, that we have the petitions that we desired of him. Uh, I know, don't misunderstand me, in times past, I prayed the same way and uh, did not get results. But thank God the Lord helped me to see, uh, son, don't be so quick to pray and then just tag if it be thy will. Make the effort to find out the will of God. And as you're finding it out, something grows in you. Uh, that, that awareness and that confidence and that boldness. And you'll get to the point where you'll start praying like people did in the Bible. You'll start talking like they did in Hebrews chapter 11. Amen. It'll just come right out of your mouth. And, and you'll tell the devil where to get off. And, and, you, and you don't mean maybe. And, and you'll come boldly before God and lay hold of something just like you know it belongs to you. And, and, and if you won't upset the Father, He'll be pleased. He'll say, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. Come get it. Come get it. Lay hold of it. Praise God. Your confidence, your faith will please Him well. And that's it. We're out of time again for today. Be sure and come back tomorrow because you can see we're not through with this. Come back tomorrow. We'll see you again in Faith School. I've got no Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.